Hi, how are you? Hey, everybody. Hey, it's Arn. Um, Barn Med Coney, and uh, it's October 19th, right? Um, it's Wednesday night. We had the final Rock'em Sock'em Robot debate between anyone running for president. This has been only going on for two years, two years that we've seen this going on. And um, so there's these two people who are running against each other. I forget their names. Um, let me see. Uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton for President of the United States. They had an hour and a half debate. Um, it was hosted by Chris Wallace. Now, I have to tell you that I love watching debates. I have a television set over here. Then I have my two computer screens. And I have my phone. And I'm watching what people are tweeting. I'm watching the show. I'm trying to look at an analysis all over the place. It, think of me as a, uh, like I, I'm on crystal meth and I've eaten a bunch of mushrooms, and I'm speaking in tongues, okay, because that's what you have to do in order to really analyze what is truly happening in this conversation tonight, because here's what is, let me, let me just summarize, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to tell you what I told you, so I go to Facebook. You can't see it's too bright, but I, I go to my Arn Menconi Facebook page because this is for my special friends. You know, these are for the people that um, understand that I have a, a raging sense of humor. And so I make jokes that are completely inappropriate. And like Tom Brokaw is a moron. He said, Al Gore, Let's see, can you guys hear okay? Um, Al Gore and John Kerry didn't bitch afterwards uh, or didn't bitch about their campaigns being rigged. Um, and they're spinning that all the newspapers are already going to tell the story that it was a good debate. They talked about serious issues. It was really substantive. Donald Trump came out subdued for the first hour in discussions about um, Planned Parenthood and women's choice, and um, they talked about gun control. They, they talked about a lot of issues. And, uh, th but all they're going to spin out of this is that Donald Trump said that when asked if he's going to complain about the outcome of the election, if he thinks it's going to be rigged. And he said there's millions of votes that uh, are illegal votes. Well, I'm going to say it's the opposite. He thinks it's people who are dead voting. We know what's happening in these elections that Al Gore and John Kerry should have fought was those were rigged elections. There were a bunch of voter suppression. There were people who weren't allowed to vote who had felonies that we know that these laws have gone all the way to the Supreme Court and proven that uh, you can't do this like in Texas and other places. So, yes, the elections are rigged. I grew up in Chicago. There was a joke growing up. You know, you vote early and often that if the Rush Soviet Union used the voting booths from Chicago, Mayor Daley would win the election. John Kennedy became president because of a rigged election that Mayor Daley was able to create for John Kennedy. And they just didn't have the ability. So this is a mainstream media that has yet to uncover a rigged election. They couldn't find it if it was slapping them in their faces because they don't know how to do investigative journalists because they're not investigative journalists, they're repeaters. They're working for the state-run propaganda in our state is called the oligarchy, the United States of oligarchists. That's what it is. So when you start to realize that these mofos, who are Chuck Todd and um, uh, Andrea Mitchell, who's 
husband is Alan Greenspan, who thinks that Ayn Rand is God, and Tom Brokaw and that know what the hell they're talking about. All they're talking about is, all right, we're going to make it look sobering, like we had a real discussion about politics in America, but Donald Trump is batshit crazy. And the way he seems to be batshit crazy is he's going to talk about how the election was rigged before the election. Well, look, this is the same motherfucker that was a truther, all right? So yes, he's going to lie. And Hillary's going to lie. And the media's going to lie. So we were, what I like, what I, I love basting in lies. I love it. It's like, rain on me, rain lies, rain, piss on my back and tell me it's raining. Yeah, that that's how, it's it's just the golden shower of lies. So, see, I, I, I hope I didn't offend anyone. Because you were offended watching L, watching the debates. If you watched the debates, you probably didn't watch the debates because you're like, why, why do I want to watch these two guys? They're just, you know, it's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. What, what, why, why, why? Because they're fucking you over. Don't you want to be kissed when you're being fucked? That's what's happening. You want to know how you're getting screwed over. They brought up WikiLeaks. And Hillary Clinton pivoted right off of WikiLeaks onto Russia and Putin. That's training. So as soon as they bring up WikiLeaks, Hillary, you're going to start talking about Putin and you're going to start talking about Russia. And Donald, when they ask you a certain question, you're going to turn and you're going to talk about something. It's called pivoting. And then the moderator, the moderator Chris Wallace, is going to sit there and go, uh, Guys? Guys, uh, guys, if you could not talk over yourself, uh, guys, girls, girls, guys, um, and, and we want to thank the American people for watching this fiasco for the past hour and a half. Um, so they talked about no-fly zones. So here's a couple of things I want to go over, all right? You with me? Anyone give a shit? Who we got here? Oh, my fucking God. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um... I'm going, by the way, I'm declaring my run for presidency against Kanye West um, in 2020, right here tonight on this show. So, Tom Brokaw's a moron. You got that one? You like that one? Here's, it gets better. Here's all my jokes that I wrote for tonight. Actually, underneath all of the jokes is the truth. So, um, about to do my, um, the last question of the night was, are any of you guys, who's the real motherfucking baller? That was the last question that I heard last night. It, they ran out of time and no one was able to answer that, but they wanted to know, was there, was there a real baller in the house? Um, the other question, uh, the other thing that I like to do is, because no one pays attention to anything and, and no one gives a shit, I like to make sure that my aunt who's in her 70s, freaks out when she reads my Facebook post. So I put, fucking your way to virginity. Here's what the oligarchy wants you to think. That was a substantive debate. Donald seemed subdued, and for the first half, uh, but, ca but calling for a rigged election is absolutely incredible. Remember, this is the same media that doesn't, doesn't think any election is rigged, and that the and that wars are for peace. See, I when I listen to these debates, I actually think that they're trying to tell me that if we have wars, we're going to have peace. And that's why I use the analogy fucking our way to virginity. Because we're thinking, yeah, that's not gonna work. Um, so neither is going to war, which they don't really talk about war. They play something called foreign policy bingo. So, for $500, who would like to try to prove to us that they know something in the Middle East? See, it's like a map, and there's continents, and these continents have cities called Mosul, and Mosul, for $500, where's Mosul? Um, it's in Iraq. Yeah, oh, and ISIS is in Iraq, and we're trying to take back Mosul, from ISIS, because we're fighting ISIS in 
in Moso. Okay, great. You you get to pass to the thousand dollar question. Aleppo, uh, because uh, Gary Johnson couldn't figure out where the fuck Aleppo is. Aleppo is in Syria, and um, let's talk about whether or not it's like completely decimated or just sort of like almost completely fucked, okay? Donald, you go first. Well, you said in the last debate, Donald, that it wasn't really destroyed, that it was destroyed. Well, what's the difference between destroyed and completely fucked up is what Donald's answer was. And I have to give him props for that because I think that's the way I would have said this is a stupid fucking question. If you think I'm going to answer questions about whether or not we're going to win in Mosul or we're going to win in Aleppo, you guys are, th this is like craziness to me. We've been in the Middle East for 30 years. We've been at war with these countries with killing all of them. Why don't we talk about how Saudi Arabia is exporting Wahhabism and how we're playing in a proxy war against ourselves and how Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey are arming al-Nusra, the moderate rebels that are supposedly fighting for us that we spent $150 billion on or $1 million on to uh, budgets ago that everyone voted for and that money went to go and support 60 rebels but no one gives a fuck how much money we spend on supporting 60 fucking rebels because we're spending a trillion dollars a year on military and security but we're going to only tell you that it's 562 million dollars if I run out of time yet because 562 billion dollars is 52 percent of our discretionary budget but that's really not what we're spending. We're spending much, much more, and we're also approving weapon sales to the tune of a trillion dollars under Barack Obama in the eight years that he's been in office. So, bottom line que question, which of the two of you are ballers and going to take us to war faster because that's what this government does? Hillary, would you like to go first? Yeah, I'm a motherfucking baller. I'll go to war with anyone. I like no-fly zones. And I'm going to have a no-fly zone without having troops on the ground because I'm going to negotiate with Syria, who I'm at a fucking war with, and Russia that I want to try to have a fucking war with, over having an opportunity to have a no-fly zone in their country and tell them what to do. Well, I'm pretending that I'm going to go after ISIS, which is basically some front for me to say terrorism is around everywhere in 32 countries and if I have terrorism like red like the red scare I could always be going to war so you know I I'm I think this this debate on foreign policy absolutely smelled like horses fucking ass like like months old like the thing I mean this was like glue factory shit on foreign policy. But I'm used to it because that's what we've been getting for every fucking debate. If it's Bernie Sanders and her, and it, Bernie talks about, uh, you know, um, King Abdullah and Jordan, King Abdullah and Jordan, King. Ab so they learn the names of these countries. They learn the names of these leaders. If it's in Egypt and it's Sisi, and if it's, you know, um, if it's in Turkey and it's Erdogan, and they sound like they know what the hell they're talking about. All they know that they're talking about is they're raising millions, if not billions of dollars from the military industrial complexes and from the Israeli APAC lobby in order to keep the Middle East fucked up. So Chris, um, I hope I answered your question. I know I took it a little, I kind of pivoted to the fucking truth um, in order to answer that we have no, we don't give a shit what's happening in Aleppo or Mosul. We really don't. We don't give a shit what's happening in Yemen. We don't care about whether or not we're creating millions and millions of refugees. We just want to spend money on the 25,000 missiles that we dropped since July of 2014 on Iraq, on, ISIS, on Syria, pretending that we're going to kill 30,000 ISIS militants 
when we've been saying 30,000 for two years, when we've been dropping bombs and telling people that our drone attacks have only killed 169 innocent people. When last week, Saudi Arabia just happened to drop a bomb on a funeral home. Gee, fuck, we just dropped this bomb on a funeral home and killed 100 fucking people. And uh, we'll get right on discovering how that happened. Oh, we, we know. Our country takes six to nine months to figure out when we drop a bomb on a Doctors Without Border hospital. But our country, uh, but Saudi Arabia, who uh, won't let women drive, is completely a monarchy um, that crucifies anyone that has any dissent, but is one of our allies in the, in the Middle East. Um, killed a bunch of people, and um, it doesn't matter. They're only fucking Houthis, you know. They're only Shiites, you know. It just it just gives us the opportunity to have the big balls to say that we're ballers and we're going to go out there and we're going to have a bunch of. Uh, we need to spend more money, and I'm going to build up my defense and my military so that we are the strongest military in the world. We are going to have peace by bombing and fucking our way to virginity. So let's go off of foreign policy because um, they didn't talk about foreign policy. They talked about foreign policy bingo. I hope I drove that point home so you people get it. All right? It's a trillion dollar budget a year. There's trillions of dollars spent. There's no audit. I repeat this point over and over again. And when I have... Um, when I have Alzheimer's, I hope I'm still repeating it over and over again with the latest figures. You know, it will be $10 trillion a year budget on military and defense, but by then we'll have global warming. So let's, let's, let's keep the depression really high here because I'm going to take this up, make you feel like you want to kill yourself, and that our country is already like Thelma and Louise, the fucking car is already shot off the cliff. All right, so that's where I want to take you, and then I'm going to bring you back into happy thoughts, okay? And we'll do like the warrior pose and downward facing dog, and we'll do some namaste, motherfucker, and all of that kind of stuff. All right, so um, is anybody watching this show? I mean, really, I just feel like I'm having an, uh, a sort of a one on one conversation, you know? I, I, I just, it, it feels like it's just you and me here in my. Crib. This is like cribs. Let me show you where this is where it all happens. This is where it all goes down. You know, right here. So um, we've got Tom, we I uh, we have the fact that they talked about what they would do with Social Security. And again, Chris, uh, I'll pretend I'm Chris Wallace. So uh, you talked about Social Security and what you would do with Social Security. And then they answered the questions, and they whiffed. They didn't answer the questions. So here's where I would have gone if I was Chris Wallace. Um, Hillary, uh, Madam Secretary, in a recent WikiLeaks, it was shown that you would have privatized Social Security and Medicaid with Wall Street. Um, and so we just want to know what the fuck is that all about? Uh, so that never came up. That WikiLeaks was revealing that she's a um, she's lying but the context of the debate is lying lying and I forget the third part okay um, it, it, uh, so we had that and then we had um, um, oh yeah I love this line uh, Donald while you were groping and uh, doing The Apprentice, I was out uh, doing regime change in Honduras in, and Libya. Uh, but the way she said it was this condescending Donald. It, it was like Nurse Ratchet and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, Billy, what would your mom think? What would your mom say? Uh, uh, ba ba and uh, it was Donald. Well, you were uh, chasing tail and doing the Apprentice. I was 
making deals with the Clinton Foundation to sell weapons to Qatar and uh, backdoor deals with Saudi Arabia and promoting fracking all over the world and doing regime change in Syria, in, uh, in uh, Libya and uh, Honduras and people died um, and uh, you know I, I don't even want to make a joke about what happened in Libya because of where it is today and where Honduras is today uh, it is it was to a certain extent uh, the straw that broke the camel's back on where we are now in the Middle East where it is truly what uh, Colin Powell said, if you break it, you own it. So we now own the Middle East because we fucked it up so badly by trying to do regime changes and balkanize it for the Israeli neocons and for oil and for pipelines. So keep that depression up. Don't go away. Don't go away. You know, um, I'll, I'll bring it home. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be like your Molly by the end of the show. If you hang in there, keep the suspense high. You're gonna, you're gonna feel like you're gonna want to kill yourself. But I'll come in with the ecstasy. Trust me. Um, so, so I know you, you know I'm gonna say this, but uh, is is climate change like um, not allowed to be talked about in debates of any kind? Is this like um, talking about doing the Humpty Dumpty or something? I mean. What the fuck? We could talk about grabbing pussy for three fucking debates and we can't talk about climate change? I mean, I, 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 this is where I feel 57 years old. This is where I feel like a guy who grew up on the south side of Chicago where I'm sort of like, um, excuse me, um, Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm stupid, you know, something, I, I, I don't know, but, um, it seems to me like they're always talking about the fucking global warming shit, you know, it gets hot, it's like, I mean, I'm still in my t-shirt here, it's October 19th, you know, I'm up in the mountains, uh, Colorado, it's a pretty good place, you know, but don't move up here, because I don't want you motherfuckers ruining this shit for me, anyhow, it's, uh, it doesn't seem, I mean, it would, you would think they would want to talk about something that seems like it's pretty, like, inevitable, you know? And I, I, I'm no scientist here, you know? Uh, but if you, like, fuck the ground with this fracking, and you just fucking it, fucking it, you know, over and over again, don't you think, like, that, methane is that what it's called is it methane gas it like comes up into the atmosphere and it's like fucking the water supply and getting into the aquifers and 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 but you're telling me that if i frack i can i can have clean energy um okay let me let me again i i told you i'm not i'm not I'm not really smart. I went, I went to school on Knox. You know. um, but how do I fuck my way, I'm sorry, frack my way into uh, stopping global warming? Oh, you don't, you don't want to talk about that? Uh, okay, well, let's go to another topic then because evidently this is not a big deal because the Sierra Club on Twitter right over here, is giving Hillary Clinton a bunch of mad props for, for what she, she used the word global warming. Fucker actually used the word global warming and climate change, and that was like a discussion. That was like a motherfucking discussion. Jesus. I mean, even when I was in grammar school, I had to, like, answer the fucking question. Climate change must not be a problem. Or maybe that's where they're getting their money from, like the media and the politicians. So the media doesn't talk about it because they're getting it from General Electric and they're getting it from the oil and gas companies and so is Hillary Clinton. And then you have these motherfucker Wall Street investment bankers who are like 
betting on whether or not this shit's gonna go up or down or make loans to people like that and they don't want anybody to fucking talk about this shit. All right, so I'll shut up. I'm sorry. So, um, Chris, ha Chris Wallace gave me like a fucking hard on at one point. I thought I was watching like a real conversation for a second here. He actually went in on the whole, um, whether or not you need to have troops for a no-fly zone. I, I literally, I just, I guess, I went, <gasps> oh, well, I had a moment, um, but, uh, uh, and then Donald went to know, he went all over talking about WikiLeaks, um, he didn't really run at home that well. Uh, they were talking about Mosul, uh, for a minute there, I thought they were actually going to have a conversation. That's where they started the foreign policy section on Mosul. Like, hi, let me take you to, um, a map. This is, uh, this is Colorado, actually, but... Um, most Americans wouldn't know if this was Colorado or this was Syria or um, this is Fallujah or Mosul or those type of places. But um, we 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 point to Mosul and uh, we we talk about it. And what that did is that diverted us from talking about who's a who's who's a bigger whore, Bill Clinton or Donald Trump for almost five or ten minutes. So we were able to actually talk about something that seemed like it was about something, but it wasn't. Um, and I was watching the show with my 11-year-old daughter when they started talking about this stuff, and it really, really sickened me. And um, I can't tell you, as a parent who wants to teach their children about what they should aspire to, that someday you too could grow up and be one of these two liars. You know, I have a I have an 11-year-old daughter who's an angel, and I have a 10-year-old son who's amazing. And they were not wanting to watch any of this. And uh, I, I was thinking to myself, well, when, when I was in eighth grade, my grandfather used to say, sit down, watch all of this. This is history being made. Watergate. What's Watergate? It's uh, it's about the president and what he lied about. And they released the tapes of Nixon's and they took out all the expletive deletives, all the lying. I mean, all the swearing. So Watergate, and now we have WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks makes Watergate seem like, you know, Girl Scout cookies. You know, can I have the mints? I like the mints compared to you know whether or not we're just doing death and destruction with the oligarchy and they own Hillary Clinton. So my point is, you have Maya and Mateo sitting there and they're watching the two presidential candidates and my daughter says it would be great to see a woman president and she's only 11, she doesn't really comprehend the, the whole part. And you're like, yeah honey, well Jill Stein's not on the on the screen, that would be a real woman, a real feminist, um, somebody who actually is trying to tell the truth, who's not bought and sold. But these are not role models for our children. And if you're a parent and they're watching this and they're at that formative age, you don't know what to say to them. You really don't. I mean, I've been around kids, training kids for decades. What do, what do you say to them? It's embarrassing that they would even ask that question three times over and over again. If you are from mainstream media, will you shut up? You don't think we're smart enough to understand that Donald Trump is a fucking scumbag? What do we got to fucking talk about it between the 7 and the 8.30 time hour while you're sitting there after you had a nice warm meal with your children and you're trying to educate them about history and politics? God, it's... This is what it's resorted to. I'm shouting into a fucking iPhone about logic and common sense. 
because they won't do it on the millions and trillions of dollars, billions of dollars called media. Because that is all about state-run propaganda. Didn't you see Network? We're all as mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore. That show was on 20 years ago. All right, so that was a wrap-up of many of the topics. Now, I want to bring it home a little bit. I've been talking too long. I don't know if any... Oh, my God, there's 100 people watching. Gee, uh, hi. Um, so, uh, what should I tell you? Um, I'm a Gemini, and um, I'm mad as hell because we're 17 days out from an election, and I've been traveling all over the state, and I've been in Philadelphia and Houston and uh, New York, and I've been in a bunch of Black Lives Matters protests, and today I talked to Daniel Ellsberg on the phone, who's a friend of mine. See, Daniel, he, uh, he, was part, he, he wrote this book called Secrets, a memoir of Vietnam and the Pentagon Papers. That was Daniel Ellsberg. He's 85 years old. And then um, I talked to, hang on, don't go away. Don't let my viewership drop. Otherwise, I'll have to do The Apprentice or Regime Change. Uh, I thought I had the other book, but I guess not. All right, that, it, that's okay. I'll show you something else I have. See this? Ooh, Hillary. Guess what? See, that's, that's Hillary at work, okay? I'm going to get in trouble for trying to tongue Hillary. See this? Watch this. Signed copy. Ooh. First president of the United States. This I haven't read because it's garbage. Garbage. But I get to say I have a signed copy of a book. This. Tuan. This is Daniel Ellsberg. I'm getting goosebumps. Tuan. This was 5-26-15 in his home because I spent 10 days at his home. With love and thanks, Daniel Ellsberg. This book is the bomb, all right? This book, everyone should read. It should be a textbook at universities. It only sold 25,000 copies. And, and I bought this in a used bookstore first edition and had the author sign it. And I talked to him today on the phone. Now, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you what he said, so, but I think, ah, I'm going to die someday, and I've got myself in so much trouble already, and I'm just waiting for the lawsuits to come in and the uh, global corporate mafia to come after me. So I just want to make sure that if I get hit by a, a runaway bus or bullet or something like that or thrown in jail like Jeffrey Sterling, whose wife I talked to, Last night, uh, who's the attorney, and I looked for an attorney for him today, but Daniel Ellsberg said, uh, this is the two worst presidential candidates of his lifetime, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Couldn't be any worse. He couldn't believe that I was telling people to vote for Jill Stein in what a swing state was, so I had to explain to him that Colorado is no longer a swing state, because Donald Trump is imploded and Hillary is up by 20 points, and so is Michael Bennett. And um, what's happening with these two people is they have sucked everything out, and he said, why are you supporting her? Donald Trump is terrible. He didn't say the word terrible. He, he's very Socratic, the way people used to make you learn, speaking to you Socratically, because he has a Ph.D. in economics, that was published, his thesis was published, and he thinks I'm smart, and um, he thinks he can beat me in every argument. And uh, he said, why would you do this? And I said, my job is to get into the race and educate people because I've literally been taught by you 
on what's going on in the world so we could change the counter narrative or we could grow the counter narrative and he's like yeah 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 i i understand that but i want i want to go back to why you're at, at, suggesting that sh people should be for hillary clinton when you could upset the race and have donald trump win and i said look donald trump is a a fucking sociopath um that's how i talked to the first whistleblower in American history who was arrested for espionage. And Hillary Clinton is a neocon war hawk. And this is death by fire, death by drowning. Choose. I'm done voting the lesser of two evils. I want to vote my conscience. I want to vote and tell people to have the balls to go out there and vote for the person who doesn't believe in endless war. And yes, Jill Stein is not perfect, but I am not going, and he said, look, Hillary Clinton is more of a war hawk than Barack Obama and then her husband. And she is uh, more bought and so, you know, things, again, I don't want to miss, take such a brain because that's, there were people who used to like think in America. There were people who had brains and they read books and they wrote papers, you know, and they studied. Um, so I, I don't want to, you know, uh, disparage his brain in any way. But he said, this is actually a really good, I'm like in the zone right now. So I hope you love this because it isn't going to get any better than this, folks. This is, this is Arnisms right here. You and me, we're, we're like opening up new intellectual frontiers. So he put a framework of 50 years of living. He worked for the RAND company. He released the Pentagon Papers. He was the godfather of the nuclear movement, the anti-nuclear war movement. He understands this shit inside and out. All right. This is all he does. I mean, the guy's got like books and books, like fun for him is reading a FOIA report. Okay. So we have the most unique election in our history and we are still talking about nonsense and cheap superficial bullshit. And we have this information because you're liking it because you're hitting hard so either you, you, th this is a turn on or you actually believe in this shit and now we're 17 days out from an election and I'm a mofo who's running for U.S. Senate because I've seen how the game was played and I could call up whistleblowers and I know and U.S. Senate candidates know me by names and their operatives know who I am. And we can't do anything. We're like, we're fucked. We can't change the system. We can't get the Green Party to wake up. We can't get the Bernie Kratz to wake up. We can't be on point. You know, when you train for sports, I know a lot of progressives are anti-sports. I'm, by the way, anti-gun. I for for uh, hunting and handguns, uh, but I'm not for semi-automatics, and that was talked about. No one talked about getting rid of semi-automatics because it's the NRA. But here we are, and if we're going to play sports, you don't play baseball in football season. You don't run out if the coach tells you you're going to play defense and you play offense. You don't go out there and try to be the fullback when you're the safety. On point right now means our job is to tell the story over and over and over and over again about where we could win races. That's what Democrats do with a bunch of money. That's what Republicans do. That's why Hillary is winning in all these states and why she's sending more people in other states. Because she wants to fucking cream this guy. She wants to be the first woman president who fucking destroyed the Republican Party so legacy-wise because her sociopathic narcissism runs deep too. And she's going to take us into war. And that she has won 
Let's face it, folks. It's nearly impossible. We'd be completely delusional and need to be taken away if we think, given the work that we've been trying to do, given the information that we have, that there is going to be a chance. It's the same thing with me. I'm still running every day like I can win. I open the door every day and see a bunch of shit, and I start digging, thinking, if there's this much shit in the room, there's got to be a pony inside. I showed up to a debate today uh, at a college, and four people were there. I waited two days to show up to this thing and not make it hang out with my kids in Denver, and four people showed up. I'm talking to more people right now than I did. I could do this show every 15 minutes and talk to more people. The point is, when are we going to wake up and start talking to people? When are you going to pick up pen and paper and start talking to your newspaper? Don't even talk to your newspaper. Go to the fucking editor's office and say, will you cover a fucking election? Will you talk to a U.S. Senate candidate or a congressional candidate? Will you ask them a question about endless war, global warming, global warming, global warming? Will you talk about racial injustice? Will you guys get your friends all over the country to uh, do something here in Colorado? You know, like maybe you could give me like $2.96 so I can run some more ads on Facebook and thrash some motherfuckers called Michael Bennett, who I'm running against, and Hillary Clinton. Anonymous retweeted me yesterday. Maybe they like me, you know? Because I'm taking WikiLeaks and I'm talking about what WikiLeaks is doing because no one else did. And I'm the first person with our team who is smarter than I am who put together all of the shit so that you guys could take the crib notes and shove it up everybody's asses and say this is who's running the government, the fucking oligarchy. Doesn't matter, same shit, different shovel, who's running it? So... People need to hear this over and over again. I know for me, I had to have like a ton of bricks fall on my head before I believed this shit. I did not want to talk like a fucking conspiracy theorist. All right? I didn't want to look like one of those gray-haired guys with a beard who wears uh, monotone clothing and talks into a, a, a smartphone to a bunch of popping dots like I'm on drugs or something and think that this is the truth. Well, it is, because motherfuckers like Daniel Ellsberg and I can talk about it and debrief, and I could ask him questions about how this has been going on for 40 fucking years, since the end of World War II. Fucking Don, Tom Brokoff, you're a fucking idiot. The greatest generation. Oh, my God. Gag me with the spoon or whatever people say. All right. I have definitely, I'm in mourning because I love watching debates and making fun of them. I have been on Twitter talking about this. If you guys don't go over to my fucking Twitter account and retweet shit, I'm going to be so hurt that I might sleep for like eight hours tonight. Okay. And then I'm going to get up and have coffee and I'm going to try to do it again tomorrow. If you don't go to my Facebook page and share this shit and tell everybody that I'm spitting and breaking it down better than everybody else and that this is the way it should be talked about over the next 16 days and talk about what you're hearing and breaking shit down and feeding me information and doing direct actions and doing direct actions and going into your uh, going into your, your congressperson and your Senate's office, stay with the federal level and start talking to them. Stay in the federal level and talk to them. Don't fucking deal with the superintendent shit. That our revolution shit is a bunch of stupid lying right now. All right? Don't drink that fucking Kool-Aid. We have global warming. We have endless war. We have inequality gap. We have fucking people shooting uh, uh, black people and getting away with it called the popo. All right? Those are the fucking topics to talk about. Not goddamn whether or not we have enough books in our schools. We know we don't have enough books in our schools. We know we don't have enough 
s s health care. We know we don't have enough child care, but unless we go for the jugulars and we go for Wall Street and we break up the big banks and we attack the investment bankers that are breaking, that are doing all of this shit off of our backs, and then when the economy goes over quantitative easing, they go ahead and they look to us to bail this shit out. Well, guess what? This is not sustainable. And this is what I told Daniel Ellsberg. In your day, I started lecturing uh, Daniel Ellsberg. Yeah, that's right. So, in your day, you had war, you had inequality, and you had racial sup white supremacy or oppression. Now, you add the fourth element, global warming. Dan, it's not going to last. Game over. When game is over, and you're backed up, and you have nothing else to stand up for but your children, and your government has blood-drenched hands, and you have blood-drenched hands, because you're sitting there watching me. That means you are responsible. That means you are honorable. That means you have integrity. That means you have courage. That means we are a tribe. That means we're stronger. That means we have compassion. That means we can fight. That means we know how to talk about the truth. That means it doesn't matter if we have money. That doesn't matter if we're smart enough. It matters whether we're in action. It matters whether or not we direct it. I'm not some fucking guru. I'm not some cult leader. I'm not some politician. I'm an activist. I'm a motherfucking activist. And I'm an intellect. And I've taken the empirical studies of what's going on, and I'm applying it today, and I'm telling you our leaders all across the board, everywhere are not leading right now. Nobody's leading. That's fucked up. So great, I'll lead, because this world has gone off the cliff. The Thelma and Louise car shot off the fucking cliff. So let's have some fucking fun like they did. Let's go out like ballers. Let's make some noise. Let's have some fun.